So hi again in the fourth session of today. So you go to classpoint.app, OK, and you insert the pin code 23139. Very good. I have two people. OK, so my question is very simple. Let's provide one word for using stories in our um, English classes uh, as EFL teachers. How can we use stories? What type of stories? What is uh, the advantage of using story? The impact of st on students? Let's just uh, summarize if you want to jot down any idea that comes to your mind. So I will start with my word cloud and here you go. So I repeat. What are the advantages simply of using stories? Even imagine if you haven't used, uh, used stories before, what are the advantages? Okay, What is the impact of storytelling in our lessons today? What is the impact of storytelling in our classes today? Very good. It enriches pupils' vocabulary. I agree. Very good. Well done. Great. So as I said, you can log off from the ClassPoint app and just follow me simply on the Microsoft Teams. OK, so let's first introduce the, con the concept of storytelling. What is it storytelling? So simply, it's a great way for kids to learn to love reading and writing. But almost any school subject can be considered through a dramatic frame from history to geography to science. Even math can be taught through narrative. Most importantly, storytelling gives kids the opportunity to be inventive with language, graphics and design and to share their creations with others. Why do we use digital storytelling? Of course, I am using the high tech in my class, so it's not ordinary storytelling or reading books or writing their own narrative. It's a digital writing. OK, so digital storytelling tools provide opportunities for primary learners to begin communicating their ideas by simply adding pictures and recording their narration to describe what they've drawn, providing an opportunity to practice retelling before they begin writing. So this is very important to initiate them. Digital storytelling relies on showing as much as telling, exemplifying that 21st century literacy is more than just words on paper. For students who aren't yet strong readers or confident speakers or are new to the English language, creating digital stories provides an authentic opportunity to practice fluency. Digital stories are meant to be shown and shared. If you give, for example, your young learners headsets, microphones, they can record, listen and re-record until they are comfortable with their fluency. So we do not worry here about inhabited students. They have the chance to practice at home alone privately, and then they can record okay, their own writing. And ready to incorporate their narration into the digital story. So they write their stories, their um, creative writing, they record it. Okay, so we have speaking activity also. So I think we are working on a lot of skills here. Uh, Miss Anna, I have given you access, so please, if you don't mind, can you uh, enter anyone who is in the waiting room? So if you have anyone waiting, try to check because I have given you access. Thank you. The process of developing a digital story provides opportunities for students at all competency levels to develop and improve their writing craft. Many digital storytelling tools include a storyboard view of the pages in a project helping students see how their writing is organized and providing an easy way to change the order of events and ideas. Students can also look at the visual details in the pictures they have added to their stories and then enhance the story with additional descriptive writing. So also we are working on a very important 21st century skill, which is critical thinking and creativity. So it is as if they tailor their own learning by this storytelling tool. Digital storytelling provides a compelling need to read and listen carefully and to write and edit effectively. Writing, adding images, writing more, rearranging the order of a project and changing specific details helps the students see that effective storytelling requires time as well as reflection, of course, and editing. So they will be very committed to that. 
Digital storytelling establishes the relevance of schoolwork, creating digital stories like the ones they are watching on YouTube and Netflix, help young learners see how the skills they are learning in school connect uh, to the world around them. This is very important. We are not uh, teaching in very obsolete way, so it's very crucial that they feel they are related, they are connected to the world, and this is very important. OK, I will start with my favorite one, which is Story Jumper, a very simple online software that allows kids to write stories, generate customized characters. You have possible option of creating your own character or just choose from a built in uh, data and narrate their own book. Excellent for younger students. The step by step teacher's guide makes it easy to integrate this platform into your curriculum, free to create and share online. So it's a free platform, basically. Pay only to publish or download books. You can download it uh, as a PDF, but it is a premium feature. Students can read thousands of their peers' creation around the world. The second tool that I've chosen today, even though there are a variety of other tools, these are the most, I think, uh, practical and easiest one, is Book Creator. So it's also a powerful e book creation tool. It allows users to embed all kinds of content from rich multimedia to Google Maps, YouTube videos, PDFs, and more. Premium version allows for real-time class collaboration. So unfortunately, it's uh, a paying, a fee paying feature. Uh, teachers, uh, other colleagues can work instantly, synchronously on the same platform. And be sure to check out the auto draw. There is also an auto draw feature, it's paying, and the artificial intelligence powered feature also, which aids arti artistically challenged users in fashioning drawing to be proud of. So as I said, these three features, they are uh, premium. So they are fee paying, they are not free. Okay, so that's it for uh, the presentation today. Let's deep dive. Uh, so, as I said, I've chosen only two, even though we have a lot of other variety. You have Bansi, you have a lot of other um, visually attractive tools. I will start with the book creator. So, first of all, you should log in to bookcreator.com. So, to get started, you head to bookcreator.com. So, this is the home page. Okay, so this is the home page. I will scroll down. You get started with some videos in here. The use book creator. You have also a version for school district, which is paid. On the top, you can have a blog to read, to get useful information, updates. This is for the school district. Different resources. The pricing, if you want to buy a package. And the different specific features. So let's say I'd like to sign up. So usually you sign up or you sign in and you will have different options which vary from the Google account to uh, Microsoft to, to uh, etc. So we get used to that in the previous sessions. OK, so normally I will start with the three lines on the top left. You see, I repeat, I start with the three lines on the top left. So here, if I click on here, I will view my library. So if you are a new user, of course, you will not have uh, any library. They are uh, blank. Uh, still, you can join a library by providing a code. So I click on here to join a library. Let's say I don't have any library yet. And I copy paste a code, OK, sent by my uh, uh, teacher if I am a student or my fellow teacher if we want to collaborate on the same library. I hope it's clear. Close this one. OK. And if you have other library like me here, so you see I have my private library and my public library. I click on that and you have the number of books. So usually you have for the free library, you have up to 40 books. Unfortunately, up to 40. After that, you wish you should upgrade your library. So the free version, you have more than 100 books. But for the uh, free account, you can enjoy only up to 40 uh, books. I think uh, it's uh, it's enough for our students to have 40 books. Okay. 
uh, I come to the top here. So in addition to the library, you can discover, I click on that, anything resources by class, resources by subject. I choose my subject while I need it. Okay, I move on to learn if you want to watch videos, if you want to have more uh, ideas, resources also here. Okay, certification. This is a new uh, part here, so you can watch the uh, videos, you finish the quizzes, and you complete your uh, training to be a book creator certified author. Very easy, very practical practical and very, uh, very quick in time. It doesn't really take a lot of time. The videos are very, very short, you see. So it's up to you to discover that. And you have different uh, apps which are upgraded, which are built on, okay? So simply, if you want to add them to your book creator, you click on the plus icon, okay? And I activate, okay, I enable my app. So I can add Jiffy. Uh, I will be asked, of course, for all the students, uh, for all the library, I, I will click, okay? I will check them all. Finish. I move to the next part. I can add also Bitmoji to have a variety of my students expressing themselves and me too as a teacher. And anytime you can deactivate, okay? If you are not interested or um, your students do not like to have it, so you are free to, choose, to change the setting anytime. The Canva, if I want to add the Canva, even though the Canva only you have one free, unfortunately, if you are using more than one Canva, you should pay, okay? Only one Canva. Let's say I want to activate it. The same for all my classes, for more, all my library. If I want to add, to insert my Google Drive, I have the possibility to do that also. Similarly, I will select all. If I have animated emoji, I try to have it. And so far, I add anything that uh, appeals to me and my students. The Google Maps is a very exciting feature to add your map, okay? And 3D models. Let's say I want to experiment to try this feature. Everything is set. I come back here. I close this tab, okay? I come back for the library, okay? So let's say I am in my library, either it is blank or I have books. So on the top of my library here, top right click, okay? On the top right click of the plus. So here I have a plus new book to add my new book. I click on that and I will be taken to this page, right? So here I choose my desired layout. Either I choose from this group, okay? Or I check by models what I have in mind, to create a newspaper with my students, to create a notebook, a fiction book, a magazine, a school magazine, either by themes, I can choose by themes. So you have a possible, an endless possibility of choices in here for the layout. Let's say I'd like to have it blank. I want, for example, to have a comic book, so the larger, the better, okay. Let's say I am having a notebook book, so it depends on your choices. Let's try this one. OK. Now on the top right, OK, here I have what we call the inspector button. You have the plus button and the inspector button. OK, let's start with the plus button in here. OK, so I click on that and simply I can add to my home page, to my cover book, images, I can insert camera, take my photo, okay? I can have a pen if I need to type a text, we'll see that later, or simply record my voice, or simply record my voice. Next, I can insert forms. And the last one, in the plus, I have already everything that I added, okay? The applications that I already added, okay? So, Okay, 
I go to the inspector button in here, I click. So simply this allows me to change the color of the cover. Uh, I have different uh, colors, te textures, borders to choose from are free, simply colors. Okay, I have also borders. So multiple choices. You can also add your own, for example, you change and you apply that. Okay, let's say I will choose this color. Okay, now I'd like to add a text to my book cover. So simply I go to the plus button, I go to the text, okay, and I type the name of my text. Let's say I will have students preparing a common book about the Black Civil Rights Movement, for example. Okay. I highlight my text. I can play on the font, italics. I can insert a link, which will take me to another uh, external uh, website. Okay. So let's say I finished. I click on finish. Okay. Um, this is very important. Take a look here. So when I am not selecting my text, the plus button will only have these features. However, if I select my text and I click again on the plus button, sorry, let's do it again. Normally we should have, sorry for the inspector button, so let's repeat. So if I don't select my text and I click on the inspector button, I only can change the color, the background, the font. However, if I select my text and I click on the uh, inspector button, you see, so everything changed. Now I am able to reshape, resize my text. So don't worry about that. Everything could be changed from the inspector button once you select your text. So I can play on everything, change the color. Okay. Let's say I finished with my title. Now, I'd like to move to the second page. So I click on that and I have the second page. Similarly, so here I click the plus button. If I have any image, let's say an image of Martin Luther King. Okay, so I check in the browser without leaving. You see, so very practical and time saving, especially for students when they are having their books in here. So I click on that and, and I add it to my page. Let's see. And so on and so forth. So you have um, multiple options. I will show you, for example, I'd like to add here. Uh, let's say we will add a map. So I go to the Google map. Let's say I will look for Alabama since the civil rights movement started in here. So everything is set. So I click and I add my map. So perhaps uh, I don't have access to this yet because it uh, it has uh, become um, a premium feature. Usually I used to work with that with my students, so I think they have changed a lot of the features in here. Okay. So now let's say my book is ready. I click on the play button to read or to see my book. So this is how does it look? Okay. So. I come back to the edit button if I am not satisfied with the result. Let's say here I'd like to add a short paragraph, so I come back to the text. The pen is not really practical, so unless you have a, a tablet with a pen, with a specific pen, so you can write. So take a look at my 
writing. So I don't think it's very practical for us as teachers. I will keep this page. I move next. Let's say I'd like to have a short paragraph. So about the civil rights movement. Of course, students will be doing that, okay? So let's say it was a movement. If we tolerate people from segregation and oppression. So I finished. I want it to be bold. So similarly here, I still select my text. I go to the inspector button and I can choose the color, the font to reshape it, to resize it as much as I want to. Let's say I am satisfied now. So I come back to my books. And here I have my first book on the book creator platform. Of course, as you can see, I didn't have, uh, I haven't yet chosen a title for my book. So let's say, civil rights movement. So simply you click and it is auto saving. What is very uh, practical feature is the auto saving in the book creator. There is no need to save anything as uh, the moment you type in, it is auto saved. Okay, and you have of course the name of the person who wrote that. Okay, I came, to, I come here to the bottom of my page. What do you have here? You have three options. I will start with the first one already. Uh, we have it uh, on the top when the book is uh, open. So here you can play your book. Okay. The second one, I click on that. These are the, the options. How do I want to um, share my book? Uh, either I publish that online. I click on here, for example, and he will ask me. I give a description. Uh, let's say uh, historical events during the 60s, for example. Anything that helps other students, other teachers to have a clear idea of my topic of my book before reading, okay? Uh, who can access the book if I want it to be private or if I want to have public? Everyone can access my book. Uh, to remake, it means I allow other people to remake, to change the pages, to delete, to edit a variety of options. Why not? I want them to, to be more creative, especially when you are working on one book for all the students, because you have two options, either on one book or uh, every each student creates his own book. So, and my book is published online, you see? So here I copy the link and I send it to anyone or I can read my book online. If I want to stop, okay, here publishing my book, let's say I want to stop it because it's not already finished, I stop. Okay, I come back in here. I can collaborate. Unfortunately, this is also a, a premium feature, so I can't uh, uh, really, um, for my uh, free account, collaborate. Okay, so this feature is fee paid. Okay. Next, I can download it as any book or simply I can print my book. On the left here, I click on that. What do I have? Either to import the book, to place it for a library. For example, I have two or three libraries and I am wondering where to place my book. Of course, you uh, order your libraries according to topics, according to students' uh, grades. It depends on your work, of course, and your objectives. To copy the book, to combine, this is very, very important. To combine, it means each student, especially that the collaboration feature is not allowed anymore in 2022. Unfortunately, it, uh, uh, it, it wasn't allowed. I used to have that with other teachers around the world in international projects. I will show you in a few minutes. Uh, however, I have recently discovered it is uh, disabled. We can't only when we have the uh, premium. OK, version. So simply each student creates his own book and then I combine my books. It's very simple. I choose the books I want to combine. I click on next on the top of my page. OK, I choose. Let's uh, 
for example, students were, I choose the name of my library, okay, my combined book, and I created an extra large book in which I have all my students work. So imagine it's very practical, it's time saving. So a few seconds, my book will be ready, okay. So as I said, um, collaboration is not uh, is no longer allowed. However, I can provide an invitation code for my students to the library to add their own books. So let me show you here. I click on the invitation and I can share this invitation with anyone, student, teacher to work with me on my book. However, they cannot really work on the same book. However, they will create their own books. So there is no harm in that. Later on, the teacher can collect all the books together. So if I am not satisfied with my combined book, of course, I can edit, re-edit, et cetera. I hope it was clear. So let's come back to discover here. If you are new, so I recommend that you take uh, a look a few minutes. Okay, so let's say I'm looking for a specific topic on my mind for languages, for example. And I will have a synopsis of different books created here. I will choose one of them. Let's make sure it is in English. And I read, of course, so some of them are already published online and they are they, they enjoy all the features. OK, uh, here, let me check if it is in English. Now, because there is a very important feature here to tell the story, to read the book. So let's come back in here. Come back to discover. OK. And let's say box to remix. We'll take this one, for example, we we'll check it together. I think uh, it's in English. Great. So, and I click here on the uh, uh, the button. Okay, talent button. Okay. Elage. I am not here, so and this is my reading reflections book. So normally it should be in English, so because my setting in the uh, Microsoft is not uh, in, in English language, it's in French, that's why we are uh, hearing that in uh, French, but normally it works in uh, the language of the book, the original language of the book. So I think it's very, very important uh, feature to be used by students. Of course, I can remake this book, etc. So. I come back here to my library. I will show you here. So I repeat, so on the bottom here, either you can delete the book, there is no need. You combine your books. If your students will work on different books, you can copy the book, you can place it in the library. For example, I click on that and I have two libraries, for example, and this is a shared library. It's not mine. I've um, uh, I have access to this library via a code, an invitation code by other teachers, you see. So this is how it appears on your account. Let's say I wanted to change this to move it to my uh, second collection, for example, here. The first collection and. My book is already transferred to another library. You use the invitation code, as I said, so that you allow other people uh, to work with you. I hope it is clear. So. Here you have a bunch of settings, for example, what you can able, enable, disable, etc. Before publishing the book, this is your account. You can modify the account. So as I said, you have up to 40 books. If I want to upgrade, so it is a fee payment. So that's it for the book creator. I, I hope it was clear. Uh, if you do not have any questions, I will move to the Story Jumper uh, website platform. So let me check. So I repeat, if you do not have any questions. Okay. Yes, indeed, Miss Hude, motivating a lot of fun. Indeed, pupils have stories. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so I think it's very practical. Uh, the only inconvenience that I hate after the, the new year, 
I discovered that we've lost a lot of um, motivational features. So I, I used to have the Google map. I, uh, let me check. I have another account. I don't know. Let's try to check with the Microsoft. So usually in the sign up, you will be asked to choose. So you can create more than one account, especially to benefit from um, the advantage of having 40 books, only limited to 40 books. So why not have as much as you can? All right. So here he will ask you to continue as a teacher or a student, because sometimes when you have the code, um, it seems that you are a, a, a student. So be careful to change here the setting. Are you a, a student? So here I will continue as a teacher. This is very important. And here, for example, This is a book created by uh, students, so it is published online. It was published online, and here you have the names of uh, teachers who collaborated in this uh, book. So here I, did, I have the option of just reading or showing my book or uh, download it as an uh, ebook, print it. I can copy, I can combine it with other books or import it. So. Let's check. So this is how your book will look like. So I think it's very motivational for students. This was about conflict cases. So you have the name of the school. You see, we used to have the maps. They were incorporated. It was a free uh, feature. Uh, sadly, after 2022, they've changed everything. So students uh, did some research, uh, pro uh, showcase about uh, ethnic groups, about genocide during history, and uh, they invested all their knowledge in this attractive book. So this is how it shows, very attractive, very motivational. So this is an example. Okay, so uh, that's it for uh, the uh, book creator platform. Now I move to the second platform, which is very easy, super easy and super fun. Uh, story Jumper. So you uh, head uh, just to storyjumper.com if you want to log in. And as usual, you will have a variety of options to log in with your Google account, Microsoft. So here I have a Google account. Or simply you create one account. Uh, here you can integrate your classes or you have your personal books, which are not for school. I will start from the top if you want. So this is the home page. Let's discover, explore the library. So a very, very rich, uh, super fun uh, library. So either you can check by popularity, um, the grades of students who created. So they are created all by students. Uh, the types of collection, is it social, emotional, cell, story? Is it about uh, pets, coronavirus, or simply you search uh, by languages? Okay. If you want to uh, insert your own choice in the browser, that's okay also. So let's choose, for example, here one book. So you see here, this is like the play button. So this is how you start reading your book. Uh, there is also a very exciting feature you can record. Students can record their own voices and download it there. So the introduction of the book and you start flipping the pages. You see? OK, I come back to the library. Let's uh, find something in which we have a uh, reading aloud feature. So I click on that and you will give me a variety of books uh, written by students uh, all over the world. OK, let's check this one. Already you have here uh, the, the, the icon, the symbol. So you know that it is, you have audio, the audio icon symbol here. It means the book has audio in it. So I start reading my books. And I click the, hit, uh, the, the, the play button in here on the bottom. Okay, I click okay, the play button. Already it's written listen. And I can simply listen to my book read by students. So it's an awesome feature. So. Once there was a big, white, fluffy marshmallow of a dog named Puggy. Puggy loved to eat. He liked 
all kinds of food, except veggies. But he liked sweets best, and especially chocolate. So you see, it's super fun, super motivational, and super exciting for students. So let's come back to the library and we check step by step how to create our own books. So as I said, on the top, you have a variety of options. You enter your search here in the browser, OK, or you just uh, uh, try to uh, take a look at the different uh, categories in here. OK, the prices if you want to uh, buy the, the premium, uh, premium feature or simply I go to my home So here. I have my personal books. I click on that, and this is what you have in your homepage. So there is a list of published authors. It's a premium feature to earn royalties to promote your book. And here, these are the three most important uh, spaces in, of our work. So this is the list of my books. Here, I wanted to create my book or move my book. OK, so take a look at the books I have on my library. So for example, here. On the green symbol, the tick symbol, it means they are finished. They are published online. Everyone can have access. OK, I move here. I didn't here finish that book. I didn't publish so that I show you. He will ask me. So simply I click on that. And my book is published online. And he will ask me if I wanted to share it in the library. I have a variety of options to share with the public. So everyone in the world can discover and enjoy your story. Remove anything, of course, that violates copyright. Be careful of that. You should have the consent of the author. Do not do, uh, try to use anything which is not your own, um, either songs, clip arts, images. So here copyright safety is, is an important issue. So I wanted to make it public. Let's go. OK, congratulations. Your story is now public for the world. I can add a description. It's a book about what I write in here. Let's say it's a book about water issues. Elaborated by students. Okay, and now everything is said, I can add the description and I already uh, by time you can check. Okay, uh, the number of people who read your book, who passed by, etc. You can here edit the privacy if I want it to be family only and friends. Anyone who has your box link or if I want it to be private only for me. Let's say here I'm uh, um, satisfied with that, with this privacy uh, setting. Okay. Uh, on the right, I have a variety of options as well to buy this book. So this is a premium feature or to edit if I wanted to add something else. If I want to download it as a book. If I want to write a comment for the author, if I want to share, I click on that so you can share it on your social media. This is the copy embed code to use it on your school website or simply to allow remixing. Other people can remake remix my book. I come back to my book here and I will show you. So it was um, just a collection of students' posters about water scarcity in the world, the problems of water, etc. And I come back here. OK, so I come back home. Let's say now I want to start my own book. I come here to this icon, the plus, create a book. And I am taken to a variety, okay, to pick up the type of books. Is it for uh, alphab uh, alphabetical order, for example? Uh, it is introducing yourself as an icebreaker at the beginning of the school year. It is a fantasy story. It depends on what you have in your mind. So I will show you each one. For example, this is for the ABC. So students, especially for young learners, this is very practical. It comes in handy if you are new. You can watch tutorial, okay, to review the basics before starting. Okay, he will ask you if you wanted to watch or just uh, uh, jump into working on your book. And here you will add your text, your prose, etc. So this is the first type. The second type to introduce yourself. 
Similarly, you will have a book in which the students will use their images, their uh, family members. So it's, I think it's very fun to use that at the beginning of the school year to write online on a digital story time. So their favorite foods, movies, etc., etc. You can free to add, etc. Okay, to delete what is suitable for you to make your book shorter or longer. Okay. Let's say I'd like to have a blank to start from the scratch because the same procedure will be in all types of books. Don't worry. So I click on that. And this is what I have in my screen. OK, I will start with the left hand side on here, you see. So I start on the left hand side. So here you can see. Let me close this one. OK, so you can see five types, five different types of content that you can add to your book. Let's start one by one. The first one is text. I click on that and I have different options. OK. So we're going to add in a text, okay, here by just clicking on that. So you are free. If you are having a story, a dialogue, a simulation, role play, students can choose the bubbles in here, okay? So let's say I'd like this one, and my story, for example, will be about Snow White. So I've typed my title in here. Of course, you can highlight. highlight uh, change the font color, the font size, the font, uh, uh, any uh, other styling option. So you have a variety here. Just make sure to highlight your text and to change everything the way you want it to. The text color, etc. If I want to delete it, okay, you click on the uh, garbage icon. So the basket here. Okay, so let's say I want to. Uh, reshape it or resize it or move it. So here I have, make sure to have these yellow uh, space if you want, okay? So the yellow box in here, I click here in the yellow box and I am able to move it. Okay, you see, so I am free to reshape, resize anything that appears to me. So, Let's say I finished with the first paper, even though I skipped it, uh, the most important uh, page, which is the book cover. So usually Story Jumper comes with an attractive book cover, very important and very appealing for uh, uh, learners. I can choose the color from here, the pattern. You have a variety of options. Let's say I'd like here to add my title. So I will write the same title as I typed it before. Snow White. Okay, I am free to change also the size to reshape it, the font, the format, the color, variety of options also. Okay, so I finished. After that, usually automatically you have a dedication page. So let's say the fairy story told by my students an introduction so that other readers other teachers uh, are aware for example okay of uh, who wrote to whom you write it what is the objective behind that etc so similarly you have a variety of options in here let's say i've finished everything is set in motion i move now to my page okay i will keep this one no no problem okay next I will close the uh, text bar. And the second type here is the props. Simply the props, it means you can add from a pre-built props, it means characters, or search to the web. I search on here, for example, this is Snow White. I put it, I drag and drop, and I resize it as much as I want. Or simply I can choose to search. So let's say Snow White. I search the web. OK, <laughs> I have a variety of options, maybe not really appealing for me. I will show you, for example. Of course, you see it will be in your library. I close this tab and then I drag and drop the little Snow White. Then I have my character. Or simply, OK, I can design my own character. I click on that 
And I have wonderful options here. I can choose the skin tone. I think it's very appealing to our students. Imagine they are working on a book and uh, choosing their own characters. Wonderful, I think it's very personalized. So we have a variety of options in here. Clothing also, you are free to change the clothing. The socks, the shoes. Let's say I'm satisfied, I finished. And my character, you see, it is on the left. So you, you usually you take it and you drag and drop. Very practical. You drag and drop your newly designed character. OK. Here you have a variety of options to flip it. Here to copy. To edit if I am not satisfied. Move back if you have, for example, two people like this. One of them will be. So I think it's wonderful, as if you are having a true story, you see. With a bunch of characters in the same place, for example. If you want it to be in font or just simply to delete my character. OK, I will close this tab. The third type is scenes. So simply the scenes, it means you can add the background, OK? the setting for your story. So uh, similarly, you can add from pre-built, let's say they are in the house, in the forest, on the moon, you are free. If I want to look for more scenes, I click on that and I have a variety of also. If I am not satisfied, I'm looking for a castle, for example, for Cinderella, North Snow White. So I have a castle. OK, and my castle is already ready. So either you click or you drag and drop. It is the same. You click or drag and drop. So. So and here I have already my setting. OK, clear my characters. What remains is telling my stories. Students start to tell their own stories. So I close this one. I can go also to photos to add my own photos from my desktop. Here, for example, I have a variety of photos that I used previously. Let's say I have a photo in here. I browse or drag and drop from your desktop. It is the same. I have uh, already a uh, picture. So here he will ask me, how do I want it to have it? As a scene, be careful. As a background, very big, I can't change it. Or as a character, of course, I'm uh, using that as a character. When it is very um, big, sometimes he will ask you to crop, to have the shape, so you are free for all of that. And I have my Cinderella. I click on that or simply I drag and drop. My advice is usually when you are using your own uh, pictures from the uh, uh, browser, the web browser, try to look, to, to, to change the setting in the search. OK, uh, to have transparent pictures because they will be fit like this one. This is not transparent. So try usually to change the setting in your Google browser for a transparency setting. OK, so everything is set. So I close the props. Here I have the voice if I want to add. Let's add some text before that. I click, I come back to the text. I want to add, for example, this one. So I drag and drop. And I add, for example, once upon a time, there was a big castle. I'm writing randomly just to show you. So I finished with my short narration in here. Just put it up so that the characters are clear, everyone. Of course, if you are using a dialogue, a role play simulation, so uh, this is very, very practical for your students and it will motivate them. Instead of writing a dialogue on the uh, worksheets, on their copy books, they will be motivated to choose their own characters if you are having a theme, a module about family, about holiday. So I think it comes in handy for every topic that we are teaching in our classes. Let's say I finished with that. I will just add another uh, page to, to, to check the outer look of my book. Uh, I will add a prop in here. I'm choosing randomly, as I said. 
And I will come back to the text. I will choose rather here. So it's very simple. It uh, depends only on the drag and drop. Okay. One day the mother died. So as I said, just anything to comes in my mind. So now I come back to my voice. I click on that and I'd like to record my own uh, voice to record myself. Okay, we did that. So let's get started. I click on record, two, three, one. Once upon a time, there was a big castle. So let's give it a try. So normally it should work. I don't know if you are hearing because I'm not uh, putting the headphones on my uh, PC. Okay, there is another feature here. In addition to my voice, which I already added, I can add music, I can add sound effects, everything that comes to my mind. I will check the music here. And he will give me a variety of music. I can listen to each one, side and choose by adding, okay, by clicking the plus uh, button. So, adventure, for example. Let's say I choose the second one. It's, for example, dramatic, okay? If I want to add also, uh, what is it? Sound effect. If I want to add uh, anything else, so I come back from here. And I will, uh, normally I will have the same variety so that I can use more than one effect, okay? So let's say I finish it everything. I want to save it now. And I want to listen to my work, so. I come back here to check my book. So, of course, I should save and exit. So, let's say if my book is set, starting here. And if I succeeded, if I managed to record myself, of course, I have the listen button. So, this is how your book appears. If I am not uh, satisfied yet with my book, so I come back to the edit button. I come back in here and I can add, delete uh, any features, any character. Okay, I come back to the top here. There is a multiple options, a variety of options, either to buy this book, to share it with public. If you click on that, you will come back to the same page as before. Or to collaborate. Let's say I would like to collaborate. So I will invite co-authors. Let's say if I have any one emails, I don't really remember now. So. And I have, for example, my colleague in here, Miss Anna will get an invitation to work with me on the same book. So she will check uh, her email, click on the link from the email, of course, you should click from the link of your email. Otherwise, you will lose the invitation. You can't access my book. You can't edit. And I can invite as many uh, students or teachers. The same for the students. It's the same procedure. You add them by email. So make sure they uh, have already their own emails. Okay. So this is the collaboration. And save and exit button. Uh, I don't know if I already have shown you everything. So this is the voice to record your own voice. Uh, I'm sorry, I have some problems with my uh, PC, so I, you couldn't hear my recording. But usually you have three to one and you start the recording. Usually you start the recording. Or after you finish, you stop and you hear yourself. You hear your voice again. You stop in here. For example, I want the music to be, uh, for example, just after my uh, my voice. So I can change this. Normally, it should uh, change from here. Okay, I can put it before, after. It depends. Okay. If you you want to add extra music, you are free. You add as much as you can. The sound effect also. If I want to add uh, applause. <laughs> Birds, animals, cats, dogs. So it depends on your story. So I think it's very fun, very motivational. 
after every, everything is set in place, you just save your book and it is ready to be published. Let's say I want it to be shared with others. So it is public now. My book is public. And I add a description. Let's say fairy tale. And this is also here, you have a variety of options, as I said, to edit your book if you want to add something else. So you see, even after publishing your book, you can have, you, you can still access it to edit, to change anything. Uh, comments, if you want to add comment. To say something nice to the author, thank you, it's a great book, I enjoyed reading that. So I think it is super cool to use it with your students. So. Um, I will stop the recording. That's it for uh, the story jumper. Before I leave, uh, please, if you have any questions, any clarifications, I hope everything was uh, fine, was clear. Let me check your uh, emails or your uh, chat. Okay. So if you have anything that comes to your mind to ask, please be my guest. Otherwise, that's it for the lesson of uh, tonight. So I will stop the recording and uh, see you tomorrow for the last session, which will be about uh, uh, ClassPoint, the built-in PowerPoint tool. Thank you.